counter-dependency. We've talked a lot on this channel about codependency, the urge to merge, a very, very strong fawning response where the individual feels compelled to supplicate their needs for the needs of their partner. Codependency then becomes a core belief that says love is me giving all of myself, is me sacrificing all of myself for the needs of another person. The counter-dependent comes from a very similar environment. They're raised in a hostile space where they're not given permission to be themselves. And the response that the counter-dependent develops is less fawning and supplication and submission and more fight. The counter-dependent is learning love is enslavement, love is torture, love is indebtedness, love is punishment and love is pain. Anytime somebody comes to me and they try and bring me love, I'm gonna push back. You can get a counter-dependent frequently matching with a codependent. A lot of relationship counselors say, you know, that's what comes to them. You'll have a codependent and a counter-dependent. And apparently it's quite common for them to switch roles. Counter-dependency can look like many uh, cluster B personality disorders, but isn't necessarily. Though many cluster B personality disorders are of course rooted in CPTSD, childhood trauma, attachment trauma, and codependency and counterdependency. A codependent who is not a narcissist still has a sense of self, be it ever so fragile, be it ever so weak. The counterdependent will look like classic borderline personality disorder because they're frequently engaging in push-pull. So when you're dealing with a counterdependent, you'll find you're being invited to break down boundaries very, very rapidly. If you want to develop a relationship with a counterdependent, and if you think somebody has counterdependency, my advice would be don't do it. You will be punished for consenting to their intimacy. The counterdependent is also identified clinically and in the research and the literature by a grandiose sense of self, a need to be right, a punishing interpersonal style and extreme levels of control. If you pull away, you'll be showing disinterest, in which case you will be shunned. If you move too fast and pull in too rapidly, you'll be accused of being smothering and of rushing them and you will be discarded. If the counter-dependent really wants to overcome this, they need to realize first and foremost they have a problem and they need to seek professional help from somebody who really, really understands counter-dependency. Nobody knows pain like I've known pain. Nobody suffered like I've suffered. That's a really dangerous belief to carry and it bleeds out into our interpersonal uh, relationships with an attitude of entitlement. It's very, very common amongst codependents. It's very, very common amongst people with CPTSD and we just need to sort it out. The self-fulfilling prophecy for the counter-dependent that they need to become aware of is that everybody they get with is going to be a worthless piece of shit. That's the only conclusion they ever come back to. Flashbacks create massive amounts of emotional dysregulation. Emotional dysregulation warps perceptions. So deal with childhood trauma, deal with CPTSD, and try to work on the beliefs that are holding you in place, that are holding you back. Love doesn't have to be pain and indebtedness and nonsense. The past doesn't have to equal the future. What my mother, my father, my environment taught me about connecting with other humans as true might not actually be true. Watch yourself, be mindful, be detached, and watch what you do. It's like um, yoga, you know, move into the stretch slowly. Take it easy, but you do need to move into the stretch.